Now, hot off the press, we have the latest figures on rhino poaching deaths in South Africa, as released by Environmental Affairs Minister Barbara Creasy a short while ago. And I'm going to walk you through the key numbers in just a moment, and then we'll get some insight into what they signify. As we chat to documentary filmmaker and conservationist Bonnet de Bod, she is one half of the team which made that phenomenal documentary Struip last year. Uh, Bonnet has immersed herself in the fight against rhino poaching for several years now, and I really do mean immersed herself. It has been an all concern assuming project and she's going to be answering a very simple question with a very complicated answer is there still hope for our rhinos it's not a simple answer but i hope she will help us understand what approaches seem to be working uh, where new strategies are needed and more before we say hello to her though let me talk you through what the stats say there is some good news to report uh, 594 rhinos poached during the year 2019 obviously that is not good news on the good side, though, it is a solid decline from 769 the year before. So in 2018, we lost 769. In 2019, that figure fell to 594. It is obviously still unacceptably high, but it is a quite substantial move in the right direction. And I also want to flag a couple of individual provinces which saw a notable drop in their figures. The Northwest province basically halving their rate of poaching. 65 lost the year before, 32 lost last year. And in Pumalanga, the figure went down from 51 to 34. In the Eastern Cape, it went down from 19 to 2. Uh, here in the Western Cape, the figure stayed at zero. Uh, the only one, uh, two, sorry, where there was an increase in the number of rhinos lost on a provincial level was in Gauteng where the figure went from 2 to 5 and in Limpopo where it went from 40 to 45. So some reason for cautious optimism but also some reason still to be very worried indeed about the long-term future of the rhinos in South Africa and of course around the world. Let's bring in uh, filmmaker and conservationist Bonnet de Bod, uh, who of course was part of the team that created that magnificent documentary Struip which won so many awards last year. Bonnet it's lovely to have you on the show again. Welcome. Thank you, Pippa. Good afternoon. I actually want to say Happy New Year to you and the Cape Talk listeners, but yes. it's already the second month of the year. I mean, so can you believe it? But thanks for having me again. Yeah, I feel the same way. It's just running away <laughs> from us, Bonnet. But yes, Absolutely. indeed, it's it's lovely to have you part of the show again this year. Uh, so, I mean, a lot of people would see that as reason to celebrate, moving downhill mm. quite substantially from 769 to 594. 594 is still an awfully big figure, though. Um, how do you feel about those overall mm. uh, figures? Yes, so um, obviously there's reason to, to feel good, reason to, to celebrate because there is a decline. But unfortunately, uh, Papa, no census results were released uh, today. When I asked the department's spokesperson, I was referred to Sam Parks. Now, when I say census results, we're looking at the number of live rhinos left in the Kruger National right. Park. Because yes, it is important to know the number of rhinos poached. But actually, more important than that is the number of live rhinos left. We have to look at the population as a whole. Now, I contacted the spokesperson this morning. I was, I was referred to Sam Parks. Sam Parks referred me to the department. And this happened last year as well when I asked for the census results. It, it's always a, a let's go around the circle when mm. asking for them. And, and I don't think this is a good sign. Uh, we can expect numbers to be down for our wild rhinos in our national parks and provincial parks because, of course, we had a devastating drought in 2016. We can't get away from that. Uh, and that affected our white rhino numbers and, of course, the year-on-year -year killing of our rhinos, rhino poaching. So it's a knock-on effect. And I say this is so important, Pippa, because it's really the only way of knowing how our southern white rhino and black rhinos are doing. The question is, is the current population size and net growth rate sufficient to conserve the species? And we don't know that without those numbers. Yeah. Now, according to the, the IUCN's African Rhino Specialist Group, we have an estimated 15,625 white rhino left. That's a downward trend. And then about uh, 2,046 black rhino left, uh, which is an upward trend. But in my opinion, uh, we do need more transparency around the rhino population number as a whole. Now, as soon as I hear about the census numbers, I will, of course, let you and the and the listeners know. Thank you, because that is the bigger picture that's missing here. We, we've only got a snapshot right. of one element of the conversation. If, if the population is not recovering from previous losses at a higher rate,
weight, then we continue to lose them, uh, then it is a, a one-way story, which we hope is not the case. But without those those stats, it, it's hard to know. Um, did, mm. did, uh, during that release of, of these stats this morning, Bonnet, was any insight given into uh, what they're attributing the decline to? Is it is it saying overall our multi-pronged approach is working or we think that this strategy in particular has had a significant impact? What sort of feedback did the minister give? Well, Papa, I wish I could answer you because... Unfortunately, they did this release online. It was not a proper press briefing. And it seems to that the department is releasing the rhino poaching stats now and the strategic approach to tackling the rhino poaching crisis and the trafficking issue um, online on their website. Now, several years ago, when Dr. Edna Molewa was the minister, we had regular press briefings, about three a year. And this is important because we can analyze the details. Mm. We can ask the difficult questions about issues uh, that are being glossed over or maybe just left out. And it's uncomfortable for the department to address some of these issues. And, and that's the role of the media, to get the real story, the story behind the story. So, unfortunately, we didn't get the chance to be at a press briefing, not only journalists in, in Joburg and Pretoria, but also Cape Town, to ask these questions. And also in the past, we've had various scientists and, and head rangers, for example, from sand parks, as well as heads of hawks justice, police ministers, who could give us insight into what is working, what strategies are working, what is not working, where we need to see more improvement. Uh, so for me, this is very worrying that we're not getting to to, to these press briefings anymore. Uh, the department has really sort of eased back on these, choosing rather to, to just issue an electronic release quickly on their website. And if you read through today's press briefing, it's a really short one. I mm. think one of the shortest I've, I've seen in a year a review on the rhino poaching crisis. Let me just share with our listeners a quote, uh, one or two significant uh, sentences from that r- release uh, uh, dealing with the sort of the the overall mm-hmm. strategy. Uh, so Minister Creasy said the following, that because wildlife trafficking constitutes a highly sophisticated form of serious transnational organised crime that threatens national security, the aim is to establish an integrated strategic framework for an intelligence-led, well-resourced, multidisciplinary and consolidated law enforcement approach to focus and direct law enforcement's ability to su- uh, support it by the whole of government and society. It's a mouthful saying we want everyone working together mm-hmm. and pulling together in the same direction, right. um, which I would assume is what you would have wanted every year for the past 20 years. So it doesn't really say terribly much. Do you read anything significant into that statement, Bonnie, that's not in place already? Or does it signal anything about the way forward? You know, but as you as you saw in strip, if we look at arrests and, and court cases, for example, uh, that Minister Creasy mentioned, we've spent a lot of time in nearly a dozen courts around South Africa watching how the justice system handles these rhino poaching cases. And so much effort goes into the arrest of these poachers the, uh, and traffickers by our rangers and police that one would expect that effort to continue into court. And while the prosecutors, for example, are doing damn fine jobs, their hands are tied. We can just look at cases that uh, are mentioned in this press briefing. The state versus Grunewald and and co. expected to start trial in 2021. They were all arrested before the 2010 Soccer World Cup. Oh, my goodness. Another one, the the state versus Russ and co-accused, expected to start in 2023. That's in 2023. And these alleged accused, uh, dozens of them, I'm talking about serious, serious alleged syndicate members responsible for numerous rhino poachings, are all out on bail right now. Mm. So, as I always say, our justice system here in South Africa unfortunately works for the criminals and not for the victims. Uh, Our prosecutors have their hands tied, uh, and they are doing incredible work despite uh, the odds against them. Bonnet, are there enough of them? We chatted last year about concerns around the fate of the Skakuza court, which was doing such mm. incredible work and allowing cases to be prosecuted within the, the confines of the Kruger Park. Um, and there was concern that it was being closed. We saw the minister stepping in to say, hold your horses, let's just put a pause on that. Uh, for example, have we got any insight on what's happening with that proposed move of the court? Yes, so the court uh, in Skukuza remains open, and that is also due to public pressure. Uh, 
um, which I always say, you know, the public as an individual, you, you sort of feel helpless, you feel far removed from the rhino poaching fight. And I always say you don't have to be a ranger running around with a rifle to make a difference. Uh, we need to keep the conversation going. So um, taking part on social media, talking about it, really create a movement and put pressure on those in decision-making powers. So the court remains open. Uh, a biggie for me is the bail issue. We will, they will need to properly tackle that. A huge bugbear for me and, and for so many South Africans who saw it is that someone is arrested by a ranger who undoubtedly killed the rhino. He was arrested, uh, blood on his clothing, hands, firearm, residue all over him, spoor matching the tracks around the carcasses, DNA, forensic evidence uh, on the crime scene, and yet he will be granted bail. And his clever legal team will delay the, the, the trial for years. So that all changes with, she, uh, Minister Creasy also mentioned the NISQUIT uh, that they're looking at now. Instead of the state proving why bail shouldn't be granted, the onus is now on the defense team, team to prove why bail should be granted. So this wow. changes things dramatically. Uh, then there are many other changes to enforcement aspects and, and more cohesion on how wildlife trafficking is managed. And most importantly, puts the responsibility of wildlife trafficking on the police. So hopefully uh, th this new strategy, NISQUIT, will um, hopefully this passes. A lot of time was spent on this and, and many great enforcement minds behind it. Just for those who are not familiar with the acronym NISQUIT, standing for uh, the new Integrated Strategic Management, uh, Integrated Strategy to Combat Wildlife Trafficking. My apologies. The National Integrated Strategy to Combat Wildlife Trafficking, it's still in draft phase, due to go to Cabinet sometime in the first half of this year, hopefully for approval. Bonnie, just before we let you go, uh, I know there was reference to uh, some elephant poaching figures during that release this morning, and I know that's not mm -hmm. your key focus area, but uh, uh, can can you just give us a sense of, of whether the elephant figures had gone down or up? Yes, so uh, elephants, sadly, 31 elephants poached uh, nationally in 2019. But again, this is also good news. If one can say killing elephants is good news, as the numbers are down from the year before uh, in 2018 when 71 were killed uh, for the masks. Of course, rhino poachers are still streaming into our national parks, the Kruger National Park, still seven teams per day they have, have to deal with. And, uh, you know, if, if they can't find rhino, they will go for an elephant. Uh, so it's not one or the other. Um, there's big demand not only for rhino horn, but also obviously for elephant ivory. Bonnie de Bod, thank you so much for the insights you've shared with us today and thank you so much for alerting us to this quiet release of the figures in the first place. Uh, I'd love to just leave our listeners with a reminder of where they can watch your absolutely remarkable film if they haven't yet seen it. Is Strip still available on Showmax, Bonnie? It, it is still available on Showmax uh, in English and Afrikaans, um, so that's online streaming. And then, of course, it's also available on iTunes, Amazon Prime and Google Play, as well as on DVD from our website. It can be ordered www.strip-film.com. Bonnie Debard, great to have you on the show again to, to, uh, today. Thanks so much for your time, Bonnie, a filmmaker and conservationist who spent years immersed in the fight against rhino poaching. Uh, for those asking about the Kruger Park uh, figures, uh, I'll just double check those figures during the news break and give them to you. Uh, and uh, I can tell you that the overall figure for Sand Park's areas is down to 328 from the previous year's 422.